Okay, here we are in part 12, getting down to the wire. We're going to clean up the look, catch any overlooked mistakes, and that should be plenty enough to do in this tutorial. Um, there might be some new stuff in here to you, and I apologize if I go longer than expected, so let me just get right to it. Let me introduce you to the smash button. Look over to your left on your toolbar or tool button area. My cursor is over right now and is showing the label smash. It looks like an IC with uh, some resistor, like an IC with a value and, and name. It's not a very good symbol for a button. But anyway, look for the smash button. When you find it, go ahead and click it. And I'm going to smash power and output connector. Make sure whenever you're selecting something that you uh, get close to or get right on the crosshair of that part. Alright, I just smashed it and that separated power and output, the label power and output, and the, the label J1. So these three now have their own crosshairs and they can be moved independently. Um, just to clean it up and make it more simpler, I'm going to just delete power and output. I don't think it's necessary at this point to have it on the board and it's kind of an eyesore. We could make it smaller but eh, just get rid of it altogether. Select your delete button and get rid of it. If you want to, you can move your J1 into a spot that looks better for you. I think I'll move it to the side. And you notice as I'm moving this, there's a line or a wire connected to uh, the connector that's saying J1 belongs to this. So I can put it over here and as I'm moving it, I just know where it goes. Next, I want to change the um, the names and values of the resistors, the labels to be larger, so it's easier to see. Uh, let's see. I could do that by selecting the info button, and I just selected the trace. Let me select the resistor. Uh, another trace. Uh, I'll take my own advice and select the crosshairs. There we go. Actually, looks like you can't really change the uh, the label sizes from here. But if you notice, there's a little um, option here where we can smash the resistor from the properties. I guess I'll go ahead and do it here. So now R1 and 10K are separated, sort of. Uh, I will go ahead and smash resistor 2. Now I'm going to use the change button instead of the info button to change the sizes of all these, of all four labels. Click on change, go to size, and yes, 32. That sounds good. Change, change, change. Zoom out a little bit. That looks acceptable. Let's move it somewhere where it won't be covered. be consistent with the, the names on the outside and values on top. Yeah. There we go. That looks much better. Lastly, I want to uh, be more explicit on what pins these are. We know that the outside pins are ground and power, but which one is which? Um, let's go ahead and create a label. Find the text button. It's the button with the T in it. I click that and now it's asking me to enter text. So I will type in GND and enter. I placed it there. Why was it in red? 
I'm not quite sure it was in red, but that's uh, not important. Uh, okay, let's create another label called power, or how about VCC? VCC. That sounds good. Okay, hit escape twice, and you're out of there. Let's change the font color. Try the info button. Ah, it's layer. Okay. Layers might be a little advanced, but let's just go ahead and wing it for now. So, layer 25 T names is appropriate for something like GND or VCC, a label. The T um, represents top, and names is, of course, a name. So change it to layer 25 T names for both. Yeah, now they're matching colors with the rest of the names. Move them into the appropriate places. We'll put GND over here, VCC over here. Um, let's create one more and we'll call it out. And I'm going to use the copy button. I'm going to copy G and D, put it right there, use the info button, click G and D, and rename it out. There we go. That looks pretty good. I guess the board could be a little bit smaller, but this is uh, just to get you used to the idea. So. In the last tutorial, I noticed one thing that uh, that is a mistake, and it has to do with the traces. If you noticed, um, down here we have this little bend of a wire trace that's going into uh, the VCC. That is still at the smaller size trace. We want it to be the same size as this. And uh, it'd be a bad thing if there was, you know, too much current and it'd burn up this trace. So let's change that to, to uh, the same size. In case we forgot, we'll click the info button. It's at width 24. Let's see if we can get in there. Try and click on it just to get the info on that. Change it to 24 and OK. There we go. Now I'm not positive, but I think we may have the same problem over here. But if you notice the trace, it, it the 24 width trace does actually touch the resistor pad right here. So as long as it's touching and uh, it looks like there's enough contact, I'd say you're okay. But that's be, that'd be something to watch out for when you're creating your PCBs, is just make sure your traces are the right sizes and they're, they're okay wherever the solder joints are. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to stop here. I think we've done enough. And then the next tutorial, we'll go for um, design rule check and error rule check, and uh, maybe go over a couple of common mistakes there. See you in the next tutorial.